Well, it's not every day of the week that you get to come out to Lake Macquarie, but look who we've bumped into. Who is he? Here he is. He's been fishing today. Steve Dunstan, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, Pete. Uh, thanks for the late invitation. I feel a little bit like Matt Moylan at the moment, how he would have felt getting caught in the state of origin side. But, yeah, uh, we don't know how long we've got. Probably a, a brisk five minutes in, uh, before we get wet. <laughs> Mate, uh, you just spoke about we're not too far away from Seagulls Territory and we've got a few flapping around behind <laughs> us. Yeah, yeah, Lakes United are going really well right across the board in every grade this year. They're going to be very difficult to roll on Saturday. Mate, we like to talk about the big issues of the day and breaking news coming across Australia right now is the New South Wales government has cancelled. They've put a line through Greyhound Racing. What's going on there? It's a sad well, day, actually. Yeah, well, to coin a phrase, it's probably a dog day afternoon for the greyhound th uh, people, way, the way it's panned out. Oh, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> no, it's uh, probably the most uh, highly, highly um, critical sport if people look at um, the way the dogs are treated and the way they're looked after. I've got some people that I know that are heavily involved in it, and I just know they're the most legitimate people across the board and they treat the uh, dogs like pets and they're looked after and um, yeah um, I feel for all the people involved it's it's going to be a lot of loss of jobs from from the commentators right through to the people who work in the tab and uh, across the board in New South Wales it's going to have massive ramifications. Well at the moment it's only in New South Wales but you know we might see the wider picture unfold in months ahead. Yeah well they um, what they were saying is they're uh, there's, uh, they've got evidence of over 68,000 dogs being killed, um, you know, that were uncompetitive. Um, I suppose you could probably say what happens to the uncompetitive horses now? Because yeah. I used to say they ran around yeah. in dogs' guts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a coin of phrase, but um, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you could take it to every sport, couldn't you? Yeah. I mean, what happens to the uncompetitive ones? Yeah. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, um, it's about competing. Yeah. And that's what that's why we're involved in footy. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of competing, Seth's not travelling along nicely. Yeah, Dan's got the boys um, uh, doing well. They're uh, they're playing for each other, which is always an important um, important cause when you when you're in a footy side or involved in one. And uh, I thought, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we showed some signs of uh, of strength last week against Central. I mean, playing a team two weeks in a row, very difficult. That's tough, and good on Central for backing up and coming up two weeks in a row. But um, it's uh, the way the comps set out now. That's made it very difficult for sides. I notice in the next six weeks, uh, West have four home games, so and two against Cessnock. So, look, legitimately. Um, that's why the uh, real NRL, or we're not allowed to call them that now, or the Newcastle NRL, if you like, um, decided to go with it, and um, it's got to, it's got some um, it's got some ups and downs. But I suppose you know everyone gets 16 games of football, and that's the way we've got to look at it. Mate, we were up there, up there last Saturday, you know, last Sunday up at uh, Cessnock, and we were invited down into the sheds after the match, <laughs> and uh, I was surprised a to see you there. But more importantly, your son, dead set lookalike maybe of, uh, <laughs> of the big Swede back in the day. Uh, uh, I've got to give it to Zeb. He's probably, um, you know, he's worked real hard at his footy game. He's um, he's probably not the most naturally gifted player uh, to play first grade for, for our club. And uh, But he's worked really hard at his game, works hard in the gym, uh, talks about the little pits of his game day in day out how he can improve and I think you know that's a good sign for a, a lot of young players across the board you might not naturally have all the things or all the attributes and fundamentals that make you a great footy player but you can work really hard and get results uh, you know if you do. Speaking of working really hard you've been working really hard over the last two three weeks a little trip overseas I hear. Yeah I went over for my uh, stepson's wedding over at uh, in Oslo in Norway um, was lucky enough to um, so anyone travelling to Norway who wants to watch the state of origin I actually <laughs> show it live in the Dubliner a little um, Irish pub down there and I actually ran into ex uh, Newcastle Jets player Casey Wormel really? um, yeah so he was wearing a wow. Queensland jumper unfortunately uh, what were you wearing? Uh, New South Wales <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on the same day I actually ran into Tom Jones about 100 metres down the road so 
end wow. up getting a pick with him. But yeah, it's a wonderful place, Norway. Uh, very expensive place to live, yeah. to uh, holiday in. But um, and spent the last five days in Spain coming home. So yeah, it's um, 33 degrees here, minus seven here on the lake. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah. Mate, let's talk about Saturday. Uh, Cessnock, you guys come back down to this part of the world. You take on Lakes. What are you expecting from Lake? I'm expecting a real tough game. Um, you know, Chris Adams has gone up to the Knights and good on Chris. It's a, it's a massive uh, result for him. He's a fantastic bloke, fantastic player. And, uh, you know, um, I think everyone in the game wishes him the best. And uh, the sooner we see him in first grade for the Knights, the better. Um, he will make a difference to that side not only in attack but in defence because he's a wonderful defensive player and got a great attitude and he's one of those players that other people like playing with you know you love to put on a jump put on a jump and put on a pair of boots and run out with Chris Adams no doubt about that but um but isn't it good that we're breeding so many hookers in the Newcastle Rugby League? I mean, you've got High, Chris Hyde, the rookie, NRL rookie, yeah. now Adams. Yep. Um, yeah, the list goes on. Yeah, there's a, yeah, a fair list of players. We've always had an abundance of hookers in there. You know, look at Danny Badiris yeah. for another one, um, Tari boy, but, you know, local Newcastle boy, state of origin captain, yeah. played for Australia. Uh, the evidence is there. But uh, yeah, so um, I thought Lakes probably missed him a little bit. Dean Noonan, I heard him talk on the radio this morning and said they probably lacked in a couple of areas, but they'll, they will have tidied that up this week. And like anyone who's been to Carl Oval, um, when Lakes are playing well, it's a difficult place to win. Mate, right across that side of the lake, we find Macquarie Scorpions. How good are they going at the moment? They take on Curry on the weekend. Yeah. I think this will be one of the games of the round. I, uh, I really like what Adam's doing with his team at the moment. I think they're going to be in the final three when it comes down to uh, the end of the season. They're a really, really tough side. Got some very impressive players and Gallon and and uh, they just know how to play footy. Um, I'm probably going to lean a little bit towards uh, Macquarie at home, but um, Curry have uh, also got a, uh, a group of blokes who are playing for each other at the moment, so it'll be a tough game. Western Suburbs not going along so great at the moment. They take on the Maitland Pickers. Yeah, West have uh, got a few injuries. Um, they've got a fair bit of depth in the club, so you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised if they, uh, they couldn't turn their form around very quickly. I mean... Maitland, uh, although they don't have many points on the board, they've been very competitive all year. Yeah. I think you'll agree. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I think West have, uh, like I said, they've got four of their next six games at home. And for anyone travelling to Harker Oval at this stage of the year, it's probably like going to your mother-in-law's for a pash. You know, <laughs> it's uh, not a place you want to be. Just get out of there. <laughs> yeah. Mate, the other team that's travelling along nicely is South. So I rate them very highly. They're taking on Central Newcastle. Yeah, well, South's travelling well in ones and twos. And, like, um, uh, I believe uh, Central Newcastle have picked up another Cessna player during the week. Yeah. So, um, look, again, uh, this stage of the year, weather could come into it. Just like uh, it is now. Yeah, I think Central are... Uh, uh, a stone throw away from a, uh, a good game so I think that'll be a and Souths uh, although they look like a really flash side in some pretenses they they can uh, show a few signs of weaknesses so uh, that'll be a very tough game for them just tough it out like we're doing here in the rain you reckon true it doesn't look very How good quickly has this rain come across yeah. but it's a big day as we say the breaking news today of course apart from the Newcastle Rugby League is that Greyhound Racing will be axed from 2017 in New South Wales. <laughs> so yeah, big day here. We'll better get out of the rain, mate. All the best on the lake. It's like the end of the earth coming across there. Something out of the out of a Hobbit movie, maybe. <laughs> I got an idea. How about we get the fishing rod out and go fishing? Yeah. How about we just get out of the rain? How about we do that? Let's get up and go. <laughs> Take All right, you, mate, let's bye. go, Stacey. <laughs>